Speaking of artists, uh, Los Angeles lost a great one recently, and uh, you had written some great words in Huffington Post, and um, I was wondering if you could talk about Chris Burden a little bit, who he was, why he was important for those who may not be aware of this Los Angeles-based artist. Oh, uh, yeah, Chris Burden was a giant uh, of art, changed the way that uh, we look at art, uh, whether you know it or not. Um, you don't have to be immersed in the art scene to have been affected by Chris Burden. And um, what I always liked about him was he was not um, a specialist. He was, you know, he started off as a performance artist, but he ended up a sculptor. Uh, and in between, he, you know, he did a lot of video documentation. Um, you know, he did, he, did a, he did a performance where he was on a TV show and he, and he jumped up with a knife and, and, took the, um, and he took the host of the TV show hostage and he had brought his own film crew and he wouldn't let her go until they destroyed their copy of the, uh, of the TV. We're not going to do this to you today. Don't worry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so um, but he would, he, you know, this was this very angry uh, early 1970s performance where he, where he basically used the medium of TV as, as his medium. Mm -hmm. um, but he did many performances. He did many, um, uh, you know, installations, these, these giant complicated installations. He, of course, is known for his urban light sculpture, yes. which has become the icon of L.A. And this Absolutely. Was, this was a city without an icon, yeah. you know, it's, it, it, and all of a sudden, uh, this guy who was very antisocial and, and, and provocative to the extreme of the mainstream, all of a sudden, he's the one, ironically, who ends up with the most mainstream uh, you know, place for people to go take a selfie. And Absolutely. Then, you know, it's this or the Hollywood sign. Which, yeah. which, which, which can you get closer to? Um, and it's an interesting piece. What he, what this really is, is the history of LA lighting. He went and bought at flea markets and and different you know army surplus stores and stuff. Uh, these are from the 1920s and 30s. Different street lights throughout the city of LA. And you know the gallery in Chinatown, just the other day, I happened to see one of these lights. It's one of the old light fixtures is still there, and the light comes on at night. But, but throughout the city, you, you will see some of these. And so in a way, it's a history lesson. Mm -hmm. And yet what he's done is he's taken everything you know, out except the lights. Like all the streets are gone. The street, so the artist has left it for you to fill in. You know, what are the streets? What, what, you know, where, what, what experiences did these light of yours? And you know, if you stay in LA long enough, uh, every intersection becomes a bad memory, you know. So, uh, so this this to me is a way to get rid of all those bad memories and just have you know have what was there. So, um, so I, I do think Chris Burden was a giant. He's certainly one of the most, if not the most, important artists in the history of Los Angeles. Um, he he fundamentally shaped uh, performance art, video art, installation art, uh, sculpture, and uh, he is uh, you know. He's collected by every major museum, owns Chris Burden works, so his work will be around um, you know, long after and still very influential. And I look at Tim as somebody who, with it, there couldn't be what Tim Yude does without uh, Chris Burden, where he has this, this hybrid of performance art and object making. And endurance, you know, Chris Burden would do endurances where he yes. locked himself in a locker with nothing but water. Uh, he had a full five gallon jug above him in the locker, locked in there for five days, and below him he had a five, an empty five-gallon jug. So um, he, uh, you know, things like that where he was really putting his physical self. He had himself shot in the arm as a performance in a gallery. And um, interestingly enough, the art scene in LA was tiny. And the one thing Chris Burden did was document his performances in an almost mystical fashion. And there's just these, these, there's not long drawn out documentaries about him doing something. Now, you know, somebody can, you know, lift a pen in their studio and there'll be three people to document it and have it on YouTube. And, um, but, but then there's just like, there's one image of the guy with the gun yeah. about to shoot him and then one of him holding, you know, and uh, holding the bandaid over it with the blood coming out in his arm and, 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 uh, so, so th th there's almost a mystical thing where there's only a few witnesses and, and, um, Less and, there's, and there's even more documentation now with YouTube where they're able to, to resurrect a lot of things. But I remember as an art student in the early 80s, people would talk about Chris Burden as like this thing happened. You know, it's almost like, well, it's, it's like, almost like the Bible. Well, how do you know it happened? You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, well, here's proof. There's one photo of this whole thing that we're talking about. So, so there was almost a mystical uh, quality to, uh, to Chris Burden where he was creating these, um, these rituals. And um, he's definitely one of the most imitated artists. And uh, although, although um, 
it's rare that he was even approximated.